Welcome everyone. Welcome to the lecture number two on radioactivity. So in the last class we studied the basics of radioactivity. We covered, talked about the law of radioactive disintegration. We solved some of the problems. We discussed what is half life and we also discussed what is average life. In this lecture I am going to touch a very particular topic which is successive disintegration. What about the successive disintegration? So what is happening here is Let's say you have one nucleus. So let me say you have one nucleus X. Right. And now this nucleus decays into Y. And that nucleus also decays into Z. So this can go on in a multiple steps. But here we are going to study three. Okay. So now what is going to happen is X is going to disintegrate into Y and Y is going to disintegrate into Z. Now, X here is known as the parent nuclei. We call it as a parent nuclei. Y here is known as the daughter nuclei. And Z here is known as the granddaughter nuclei. So, we have three sort of nuclei. X decays into Y, Y decays into Z. X is a parent, Y is a daughter and Z is a granddaughter. Okay, so first of all, let's make the disintegration of X into Y. So the first fact which is given to us, first fact which is given to us that X disintegrate into Y and the decay constant of this reaction, or you can call it a disintegration, is lambda. Lambda 1. So when X disintegrates into Y, it is happening with the decay constant of lambda 1. And when y decays into z, it is happening with the decay constant of lambda 2. So lambda 1 and lambda 2 is given to us. Now, initially, let's assume that all the nuclei were parent nuclei. There were no daughter nuclei and there is no granddaughter nuclei. So parent nuclei are n naught. So you take n naught amount of x nuclei. Then you disintegrate it into y and then that y disintegrate to z. So at t equals to 0. This is your situation. Now I want to ask you that after time t, after time t, what will happen is some of the parent nuclei decays into daughter nuclei. So this becomes n1. So the amount of parent nuclei is now n1. Amount of daughter nuclei is now n2. And amount of granddaughter nuclei is now n. This is your situation at the uh, time t. Okay. So now I want to calculate what is n1, what is n2 and what is n3. Do not waste your time uh, in any sort of calculations or funny thing. I am giving you three formulas which you should remember. And if you remember those formulas, you are, you are good to go and you can solve any problem. Okay. So the three formulas are n1 is defined as, so let me put a star point. n1 is defined as n0 e raised to power minus lambda t simple n2 is defined as lambda 1 divided by lambda 2 minus lambda 1 n naught e raised to power minus lambda 1 t this is also lambda 1 e raised to power minus lambda 1 t minus e raised to power minus lambda 2 t this is your n2 and your n3 is defined as n3 equals to n1 naught okay yeah oh sorry not n1 naught we have here defined as just simply n naught so n naught 1 plus lambda 1 by lambda 2 minus lambda 1 e raised to power minus lambda 2 t minus lambda 2 by lambda 2 minus lambda 1 e raised to power minus lambda 1 these are the three formulas that you will be needing for our for your questions. Out of these three formulas, you can even forget about the third one. Usually it is very rarely asked what is third one. But you have to understand that third one you don't have to remember as such. You can if you remember first two, that is more important because so far whatever questions I observed are only asked from either one or from the two. 
So first two formulas are very important, but if you can remember, please remember third as well. Because in the in the examination, you won't have enough time to do all the calculations and come up to these formulas. I will be providing you the notes and in those notes, the proper derivation is done for these three formulas. If you are interested, you can look at those derivations, but trust me, if you do not remember the formula, you are not going to utilize that in an examination. Okay. So these are the three very important formulas that you require. Okay. So after time t, what is the concentration of parent nuclei? So this is your parent, right? This is your parent. Let me say this is your parent, right? This is your daughter and this is your granddaughter. Not your granddaughter, but the granddaughter of our radioactive decay. Okay. So now let's let's do some of the graph duty. So in graphical analysis, if I look at the graphs of this, how does the graphs of this look like? So let me draw a graph. So if I draw the graph, sorry, let me bring the graph here. So if I draw the graph and on this graph, if I, on the y axis, if I plot number of nuclei, and on the x axis, if I plot time, then the, my graph will look like, so I will have three graphs. One will for, one will be for the parent nuclei, one will be from the, for the daughter nuclei, and third will be for the granddaughter nuclei. So for the parent nuclei, it is very simple. So for parent nuclei, what will happen is, I will start with N naught, and my parent nuclei will just keep on reducing. That's it. This is your graph for the parent nuclei. But this is not as simple graph for the daughter nuclei. For daughter nuclei, what happens is initially what happens when the parent starts to decay, you start getting a daughter. And then daughter also starts to decay and you get, start getting granddaughter. So in between you get a maximum, then you start getting a minimum. So your daughter nuclear graph looks something like this. So let me draw this with the blue pen so that we get the feeling here. So let's draw this with the blue plan and if I bring this daughter nuclei, I will have some graph like this. It will start to increase as the parent nuclei is decreasing, it will start to increase and then it will also start to decay into granddaughter and ultimately it will also reduce. For granddaughter, it is just you are getting granddaughter. Granddaughter is not disintegrating. So the concentration of granddaughter will just keep on increasing. So granddaughter, let's draw it green. So your granddaughter concentration will just keep on increasing. So this is how your graph look like. Okay? So this one is parent, this one is daughter and this one is granddaughter. Okay. So this is the main factual information that you need for your successive disintegration. However, there are two very fundamental equilibriums we define. Okay, And that is very important to mention here. We define two equilibriums. Now what happens is sometimes we achieve an equilibrium. We achieve a sort of equilibrium when these three are disintegrating. So what happens is we achieve an equilibrium and what is equilibrium basically? Equilibrium means that now the concentration is not changing a lot. It, it is almost continuous. So con concentration almost achieves a continuous amount. So let's understand this equilibrium so that you will get a better idea that what are equilibriums I am talking about. So the number one equilibrium is basically, which is known as permanent equilibrium, permanent equilibrium, or sometimes it is also known as secular equilibrium. So we define permanent equilibrium or a secular equilibrium. This equilibrium is achieved that if the decay constant of first is much, much more than decay constant of, sorry, much, much less than the decay constant of second. So you know, x decays into y and y decays into z. x is decaying into y with a decay constant lambda 1 and y is decaying into z with a lamp constant lambda 2. And lambda 1 is much much smaller than lambda 2. Means parent nuclei is decaying very slowly. But the daughter nuclei is decaying very fast. Because parent nuclei decays with the decay constant of lambda 1. But the daughter nuclei decays with the decay constant of lambda 2. So the parent nuclei is decaying, decaying very slow, but the daughter nuclei is decaying very, very fast. 
okay so lambda is smaller than lambda two or you can call it as the half life of first is much much greater than half life of second much much okay if you do this if you do this analysis what will happen is you can find out the concentration because for this kind of limit you can find the amount of nuclei so you know n1 is basically sorry so you know n1 is basically okay i'm sorry for this n1 is equals to we we studied n naught e raised to the minus lambda bar t but this formula is for general formula for any time t and for so on but in this case we are assuming a very particular thing that our first lambda one is much much smaller than lambda two in those cases our equation basically becomes okay i am still working up with this feature where i can remove with scratching okay so what will be n1 so n1 in this case is equals to simply n1 not okay not n1 not in our case we have just defined n not okay so our parent nuclei was initially n not right you remember our parent nuclei was initially n not daughter nuclei was zero and granddaughter nuclei was always also zero now what we are assuming in this case is that parent is decaying to daughter very very slow very slow so the concentration of parent almost remains same however the concentration or the number of nuclei of the daughter nuclei can be defined as lambda by lambda 2 n not and this thing can be almost zero right why because lambda 1 is much much smaller than lambda 2 and these are the two very important formulas and in secular equilibrium what happens is in secular equilibrium this is a very important fact in secular equilibrium you will observe that lambda 1 into l n1 will be equals to lambda 2 into n2 this is one of the most important you can call it as the statement of the secular equilibrium that lambda 1 n1 will be equals to lambda 2 okay and you should keep this thing in mind okay so i explained you what is secular equilibrium i explained you what is its condition i explained you in secular equilibrium but how do you find the number of nuclei of parent i also find explained you how do you find the number of nuclei of the daughter okay now let's come to the graph part so what will be the graph part so in the graph part so let me draw the graph here so in the graph part what i will do is again i will make the similar kind of graph i will i will keep number of nuclei on the y axis time on the x axis for the parent nuclei the number of number of uh, nuclei are almost remaining constant almost you can say it is not a very very parallel line but it is almost parallel line because it is almost remaining same how much it is remaining and not okay now what about the daughter so what does daughter do daughter also achieves an equilibrium so daughter achieves an equilibrium after some time so daughter achieves an equilibrium and this is how your daughter behaves so daughter nuclei in initially increases and then it achieves an equilibrium and what about the granddaughter so granddaughter also behaves something like this so let me draw it so granddaughter behaves something like this so this is how a grand so it should be smaller than this thing it should not go beyond the parent because it will not go beyond parent it will be something like this okay so this is the graph for the secular equilibrium okay i hope that you understand this now there is a second kind of equilibrium which is basically second type of equilibrium which is basically transient equilibrium what is the difference between transient equilibrium and the permanent equilibrium permanent equilibrium means that once the equilibrium is achieved then this equilibrium will not be uh, damaged the, this equilibrium will remain for a long long time once you achieve the equilibrium this equilibrium will stays but in transient equilibrium this equilibrium is achieved for a very small amount of time and after some time this equilibrium is broken down you are again out of the equilibrium situation 
Okay. Equilibrium situation basically means that number of nuclei almost remains constant. And in this graph, you can clearly see that in the outer region here, you can see after some time, you can see all three are almost maintaining the same concentration. Okay. But what happens in transient equilibrium? What is the condition for transient equilibrium? For transient equilibrium, the condition is same. This time, lambda 1 is not much much smaller than 2. It is just smaller than 2. Means parent nuclei is decaying slow and daughter nuclei is decaying fast. But the speeds are not very 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 different. Okay. Of, in this case also parent is decaying slowly and daughter is decaying faster. But in this case the uh, you can call it as the as such lambda 1 and lambda 2 are they, the difference between them is not too much. Okay. So in this case time period will again also be this thing that will not change. Okay. Now in this case how do you find the formulas? How do you find the formula for N1 and N2? Okay. So the formula for N, N2 is basically equals to N1 lambda 1 by lambda 2 minus lambda 1 or you can call it as N2 by N1 equals to lambda 1 by lambda 2 minus lambda 1. This is a condition for your lambda 1 and lambda 2. You remember in the last case in the in the secular equilibrium we said that this this is what we said lambda 1 N1 equals to lambda 2 N2. It basically means that N2 by N1 in that case was lambda 1 by lambda 2. Right. From here we can say that N2 by N1 is basically lambda 1 by lambda 2. But now N2 by N1 is not lambda 1 by lambda 2. It is lambda 1 by lambda 2 minus lambda 1. This is also one of the very important formula. Okay. So you can look at the graph. Look at the graph. From the notes, I will provide you. Okay, I will provide you the notes after that. You can read those notes. You can look at the graphs in that and all of those things. You can go through. Okay. Now let's let me bring some important question in this regard that we can do some questions here. So we can basically we can come up with some problems here. So let me bring one problem. I have an interesting problem for you. Okay. So I hope that you can see the problem. Uh, not yet. Let me zoom it. So if I zoom this problem up. Yeah. Now you can read the problem. So the problem basically states that a radioactive nuclei has a decay constant lambda and its radioactive daughter nuclei has a decay constant of 10 lambda. At t equals to 0, n naught is the number of nuclei of the parent nuclei and there are no daughter nuclei present. If n1 and n2t are the number of parent and daughter nuclei present at time t, what is n2 by n1? Okay. So I gave you the general equation n1 is equals to n0 e raised to minus lambda 1 t. What is lambda 1 in this case? It is simply lambda. So I will get n0 e raised to minus lambda t. What about n2? The equation for n2 given to you is n0 n0 and let me bring that equation up. So the equation we studied was n0 lambda 1 by lambda 2 minus lambda 1 e raised to minus lambda 1 t minus e raised to minus lambda 2 t. This is our n2. Now we can put the value. Lambda 1 is lambda but lambda 2 is you can clearly see it is 10 lambda. So 10 lambda minus lambda will become 9 lambda. This will be minus lambda t and this will be e raised to minus 10 lambda t. Now basically I just have to do n2 by n1. So if I do n2 by n1, I get 1 by 9. From here I get 1 by 9. 
e raised power minus lambda t minus e raised power minus 10 lambda t divided by this thing which is e raised power minus lambda t. n naught and n naught cancel because there was one n naught in this and there was one n naught in this so that cancelled out. So basically I am left with this 1 by 9 1 minus e raised power minus 9 lambda t e raised power minus 9 lambda t and this option could be a so my a option is correct okay so before i officially end the this section of radioactivity or you can call it as before i begin the uh, you can call alpha beta gamma decay i just want to explain one more problem which is basically known as the uh, you can call it as carbon dating problems or uh, these kind of problem in which we have to find the age. So let me give you an example of such problem and then you will have the better understanding what I am talking about. Okay. So let me bring this problem here. Okay. So let me bring this problem here and then I will show you how to solve it. Okay, so let me zoom this up. This is the problem. So after this problem, I will end the lecture. Let's read this problem. So you have a radioactive nuclear, which is basically 40K, potassium 40, and it decays, decays into argon 40. And the half-life of this decay process is 1.25 into 10 to power 9 years. Now they are asking what is the isotropic ratio 40k by 40 argon for a particular rock. Okay. And this ratio is found to be 50. So th they took a rock and in, in that they measured that what is the uh, ratio of potassium to the argon. How much of the potassium is present and how much is the argon present. If you divide this, you get an isotropic ratio and that comes out to be 50. Then based on this data, what is the age of the rock? Can you predict that how long, how old is this rock? This is basically used for the carbon dating processes or potassium dating processes. Basically, these processes are used to find the age of the trees, age of the uh, rocks, age of the mountains and so on. So let's see. So our 40 potassium is decaying into 40 argon. Initially, let's say there were n naught amount of potassium. And now, and there were no argon initially when the rock was born. Okay. Now, after some time, there is n1 amount of potassium and there is n2 amount of argon. And basically, this ratio is given to me. So, n1 by n2 is given to me as 50. So if I do this calculation, n1 is written as n0 e raised to the power minus lambda t. But what about n2? How do I find n2? So n2 will be equal to the number of nuclei, which nuclei 40k decayed. So the argon will be that much only. So let's say there were 100 potassium, out of which 20 decayed. So now we are left with this 80 potassium. So how many will be argon? Twen rest remaining will be 20. 20 will be argon. So whatever is the amount of potassium decayed, that amount will convert into argon. So N2 is nothing but the amount of 40 potassium decayed. So initially the amount was N0. Initially there were N0 amount of uh, potassium. Now there is N1 amount of potassium. So, how many number of potassium decayed? N0 minus N1. Right. Initially, there were N0 amount of potassium. Now, there is N1 amount of potassium. So, how much is decayed? N0 minus N1. And that much decayed will get converted into argon. So, that will be equal to N2. So, N2 by N1, which is basically 50, can be written as it is actually n1 by n2. n1 by n2 is given to me. Okay. So n1 by n2 is given to me. So let's do that. n1 by n2 is given to me as 50. 
and basically this is given to me as n naught e is from minus lambda t divided by n naught minus n naught e is from minus lambda t. Okay, so now based on this, I have to find the age. So if I take the n naught common, I will get e is from minus lambda t one minus e is from minus lambda t. If I bring this up on another side, I will get fifty minus fifty e is from minus lambda t. Equals to e raised to the minus lambda t. What I can do is I can write 50 here and I can bring that on other side. So I will get 51 e raised to the minus lambda t. So if I do this calculation, I will get e raised to the lambda t equals to 51 by 50. Now I can take log on both sides. So if I take log on both sides, I get lambda t equals to ln 51 by 50. If I get ln 51 by 50 and I can do that calculation, I can find out that what is ln 51 by 50. And if I do using the calculator, I will get fifty one divided by fifty, which will be equals to zero point zero one nine eight. Now, basically, what is the question which is asked to us? They are asking that what is the age? So basically, we have to find the time period. We have to find the time period, and half life is given to me. Half life is already given to me. Okay, so time is equals to zero point zero one nine eight. Divided by lambda, and lambda is defined as ln two by t half, and t half is one point two five into ten to power nine. This is my t half. Okay, so if I do this calculation, I will get zero point zero one nine eight multiplied by one point two five divided by zero point six nine. This is equals to zero point zero three five seven into ten to power nine. Now let's see in which terms our answer is asked. So answer is asked in terms of ten to power seven. So answer is asked in ten to power seven. So if answer is asked in ten to power seven, I can say my answer is three point five seven into ten to power seven into years, which is absolutely correct. The value of m will be three point five seven, which is exactly our answer. Okay. So that is how you solve the problems when the age. of any rock or the wood is asked to you okay so from the next class basically i will begin with the alpha decay beta decay gamma decay we will study one by one and what kind of questions can come and in general radioactive decays q value and all of that okay so that's all for today i will see you in the next class